Hey everybody, welcome to What The Tech, I'm Andrew Zarin, of course I'm joined by Mr. Paul Therod. How you doing, Paul? Pretty good. Oh, look at that, it's like it's like 2012 again, or 2011, you're back to your old setup. All I did was like turn, you know. We've gone back in time, look at us, we're both wearing degrees. blue, we got our Microsoft blue on, and... <laughs> yep. Somebody wrote that in an email, he goes, Paul's always wearing a Microsoft blue. Microsoft blue. I didn't yeah, know I like that, that they own Navy. I like that it's Microsoft blue. I mean, it could be, yeah. it could be, you know, Linux blue. Sure. It's no, not. It's not. Uh, yeah. What are you doing in there? You're, you're redoing the studio? The office? Yeah. yeah I had to consider that term studio. Yeah. I, I, I guess for a while now I've been kind of turned, I guess it would be this way. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to leave it in this position. I think I'm going to though, but I'm going to, I have a really large L shaped desk back here, which you can kind of see. And actually, where that black monitor is behind me is the way I would normally face, yeah, or have you know have been facing for some time. But I'm going to wipe all that stuff out. So I bought what I did was I bought a standing desk just to kind of see how I might orient it in here. So are you I've, standing uh, right now? No, you're uh, sitting. It's actually kind of awkward to set. It's it's because of the way it's jammed. It, yeah. The problem is, of course, I do this right before the holidays, right? So um, I'm building all this stuff out in the living room and everything. And my wife's like, you know, we're going to put up a Christmas tree, so time to get out of here. So I just kind of Hold it in, and but I'm what, gonna I'm gonna wipe that stuff out and replace it with which, smaller. You're you're not on the Heil microphone. You're what are you on the uh, ATR twenty? So I'm on the mic right because you can probably see the Heil microphone. I don't know if you can see. Do me a favor, tap me. on that mic for me. I'm make sure I'm using the right. The, one. Yeah, you're on the right one. Look at that. Yeah. 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 I wasn't sure how is it. Does it sound okay? Yeah, you're just a little far. If you get if you make it yeah, a little closer. Yeah, the to my problem work. is I can't really get. Yeah, because it comes with that little tiny stand. Yeah. So I think what I'm gonna do is um, I was just looking at this. It's funny because. It has um, like a standard mic interface. It does, yeah. And I, and I have, and actually, you can, if you just put me on for a second. Yeah. You can see, well, you can barely see. Yeah, back there's in a the mic corner stand back there. there. There's yeah. a mic stand. Yeah. So I could, I could, I could potentially mount mount that on there. You could, yeah. And just, and you know, I might do. I got, I'll figure that, or I'll just bring in the high mic. I mean, yeah, I, it's fine. So you, you, I mean, you, mic is it, just, you sound great. I mean, it's a little roomy, but that's fine. That's, you're you're far away from it, but it's. But listen, <laughs> I'm as guys, close as I can be to it. Actually, it's kind of funny. Like, um, you could even hold it. Like, you could be like a host. <laughs> hey, baby. Yeah. yeah. Actually, look. So this is kind of this will be a little strange for you because it's gonna be upside down. But the way this is oriented, yeah, it's like right. It's right is far into the. You know, you could raise keyboard. that also. It comes with a little razor. You could oh, rise really? it. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. If you that. unscrew it, it just rises up. This is a great part of podcasting, guys. This is the behind-the-scenes stuff that most people don't say. I don't see how... What do you mean, raise it? How could I... It, it comes like... It's supposed to come out a little bit. No, I think this is just... I could swear to you it did. I, or I could be... Or they made it... They might have changed it. No, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, if, honestly, if I could... Yeah, I mean, Listen, that microphone is phenomenal. It's... Yeah. I want to say 50 bucks. Sometimes it's on sale for $34. It's called the ATR2100. It does USB this, this, and XLR. This, this, yeah. There's a lot going on with it. It has, uh, it does internal monitoring in, so you also. Can put, you can, you, yeah, so you can put headphones into it, which is actually not how I have it connected right now, but uh, only because I have speakers and it's just easier to have one set of speakers. But it has um, like a, a USB connection, right? So it just works with the computer directly, which is actually really nice. Yeah. Or you can connect it through a standard mic cable. Um, I you know, it's one of my favorite cool. mics. I recommend that to everybody. If you're looking for a secondary mic or you're looking just for something for your studio. Uh, or, you know, you just want to play around with some new microphones. I, I highly, highly suggest that I put a link in the chat room. It's called the ATR2100. There's also the AT2005. It's a black version of it with a different pop filter. Mm. Um, it's the same exact microphone. It's phenomenal. The only thing it's I might change is I'm going to put a little... Uh, this is like a really blind... Uh, uh, yeah, I highly I highly suggest you tape over that thing because it's yeah, blinding. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, you turn off all the lights in your office, and like the only thing that's lit up is that. Yeah, right? that thing is just glowing. I yeah. mean, I, it's like I live in a spaceship anyway, so <laughs> yeah. everything's glowing in this room anyway. How was your holiday, Paul? How was uh, Thanksgiving for you? <sighs> it was pretty good. You know, I I stayed in. We didn't. I, I normally go and see friends on Thanksgiving morning. We didn't. I didn't end up doing that. Um, I was sick, and my friend that I go with uh, was sick as well. 
but it was it was quiet. It was nice. And then, you know, over the weekend, I did some stuff that was very atypical for me. Like I raked leaves and I, uh, <laughs> you know, built this desk and everything. So it was kind of like... Love, uh, I would love to see homeowner Paul in all his yeah, glory. I'm really proud of my front lawn right now. In fact, I almost want to take pictures of it. Like I, you know, like raked everything and then I mowed it to get rid of the excess stuff. And it's like all perfect looking. <laughs> I would love to just see you doing like regular mundane housework. Yeah, I just kind of stand there with my hands on my hips and surveying yeah, yeah. all that. Just like fine, looking you know? at the grass and, you know, yeah. just like homeowner Paul. Neighbors are driving by and I'm just kind of. I have a yep, friend. Um, here I am maintaining the standard. Weekend Paul is very different than weekday <laughs> Paul. <laughs> I have a friend, my Actually, friend that's Chauncey. that's normally not the case, but. My friend Chauncey Hayden, uh, he's a gossip columnist in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote for The Post and he's the editor of this magazine. And, you know, he does like all these celebrity interviews and he's like always out and doing this. And then on the weekends, there's weekend Chauncey. He wears like a like a nice like a like sweater, and he's wearing khakis, and he goes out to brunch. He's like a nice. very different human being. It's it's unbelievable sure. to witness. Uh, it's it's alarming. It's a little alarming. So I kind of do not want to see weekend Paul. I don't want to know what he's weekend like. Paul is there's really normally not much of a differentiation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, we have so much to talk about, guys. Today, yeah. um. A lot of stuff happening. I want to. I, I I have a little unboxing I'm going to do here on the show. I just got a package right before uh, we went on the air, so I'm going to do that. Paul's going to talk about his new PC build. We have a lot happening, uh, but before we do that, I want to thank everybody that's been watching us throughout the last couple of years. Uh, you guys have been tremendous. People that are using our Amazon link, that's gfq.co/amazon. Whenever you're making a purchase this holiday season, bookmark that link. Click on that link and buy whatever you're buying because it is a tremendous, tremendous help here. Things like Paul's secondary microphone came from you guys. Every time you buy something, I get a small little credit, and we use that for further expansion over here at the GFQ Network. Uh, you know, all these lights, all these monitors, uh, these cameras even, all came from Amazon, you know, because you guys use uh, those links. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, GFQ.co slash Amazon. Continue using that link. Also, we do a bonus show following the show each and every week it's called what the talk just paul and i talking like we normally do before and after a show but we decided we're gonna make this into a little bit of a show uh because people really enjoy the back and forth you know behind the scenes stuff and and i actually enjoy you know listen to people in broadcasting talk when they're not on the air it's very different uh if you want to listen to that you, you obviously if you're watching live you could do it each and every week we broadcast that for free live but if you want to watch it on demand you could do so by going to patreon.com slash what the tech. We have uh, we have a funding page there. You can fund us whatever you want, and you get access to that show each and every week. Right after this, after a couple hours, you post it on there. That's patreon.com slash what the tech. Also support us on Amazon, gfq.co slash Amazon. So, Paul, sure. let's talk about this. Which stage of grief are you in? <laughs> <laughs> have you hit the fifth and final stage yet? In the I Windows the, Phone you grief for, for Windows Phone, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hit that stage a long time ago. I, I, I was amused this morning to discover belatedly that some others are joining me in the fifth stage. Yeah, so, you, you are uh, in the acceptance stage where this is what it is. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's, it's funny. I mean, I think in this case in particular, I don't, and, and I don't mean to suggest that I'm particularly um, insightful in any way. I, but you know, I looked at what Microsoft announced back in July. Um, I wrote some very uh, pointed analysis of it and um which many people sort of read and say oh you know you're so negative and it's not that bad and and you know it's like guys this isn't about being negative this is about just accepting what's really happening in the world and i talked to microsoft in the wake of that stuff and they told me point blank you're absolutely right you know um we have conceded the smartphone market to apple and google yeah and, you know, google's partners um you know that doesn't mean that they're not going to keep making smartphones uh, it doesn't mean that things couldn't change in the future. Um, obviously, uh, smartphones are a big thing right now. Uh, they will become less big over time. We'll see what the next big thing is as we move forward. Microsoft wants to, you know, have a uh, a play in the game, so to speak. So uh, it's not over or anything. But you know, I, I sort of looked at what's going on with Windows 10 Mobile, and you know, maybe more specifically with the Lumia 950 and the 950 XL. Yeah, in a way that I mean, of course, I would describe it complimentary fashion because it's you know I'm t talking about myself, but I sort of think of it as more realistic, you know, than negative. Um, and you know, I, I think for a lot of people who are enthusiasts of the platform, it's hard to accept that this thing's going south, despite all of the evidence. You know, the 1.7 percent market share, uh, Microsoft's uh, lack of desire to market these new phones in any way, shape, or form. I mean, they don't really 
have a go to market strategy per se. They just kind of release them and so you know, it doesn't really matter. Where where do we go from here? I mean, it's 2015. They just released two new phones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, they have you know uh, an entire year ahead of them with a brand new operating system that's about to come out. So, yeah, it, it's not it, it's not possible to kind of predict the future. I mean, the the thing I would say is if you know if you're a fan of the platform, the good news is perfectly viable flagship class devices exist. They have great cameras. They're thin and they're light. You can replace the backs and get leather backs or other materials in the back. It's really kind of a neat capability. Um, they have unique features that are not available in other phones, like Continuum, especially Windows Hell. Hello, sorry, Windows Hell. Windows uh, Hell. Windows Hello, <laughs> sign in, uh, and other things. And so there's there's some neat stuff going on there. I, I think anyone who uses Windows Phone knows that this app gap is a very real thing, and they've decided that they can live without certain apps or whatever. They don't care for whatever reason. And so it's fine. But I, I think the days of, you know, this is the thing that's going to get us to beat the iPhone, or this is the thing that you know you got to kind of give that stuff up. Yeah, it's but not. It's not happening. It's not. Happening. Nobody's beating the. I mean, not not for. Yeah. Not for a while. I, I don't think anybody's no, beating no. the iPhone. And even though Android has significant market share, we're not talking about one phone that has significant market share. That yeah. phone is the iPhone. That that phone is still grand sure. pooba of the smartphone market. You know, when you're talking I, I, about I, I, I probably bestsellers. Yeah, I mean, sure. And not just best sellers, but, you know, money makers and profit makers and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, you know, it, some of this stuff is hard because I look at, I, I spend a lot of time with all these phones. I just got a Motorola, I'm sorry, I just got a, a Google Nexus 5X, which is, a, it's a nice phone. Yeah, I saw you, and you um, have, and you have a little uh, hands-on, you know, first impression on your website yeah. on Throat.com right now. I actually, you know, it's funny. Uh, one of the things I really like about it, if you can say, you know, you, you won't be able to see this, all of it, but just by, you know, when you, by holding it normally, and you press your finger on, you know, it, the, the fingerprint reader is on the back. It, just, it signed me in as I did that. You couldn't see it, obviously. Oh, did it really? Yeah, there's just by so even when this thing, if, when this is off, um, the screen is off. You know, you, I'm, t you know, if you <laughs> just put it on me real quick. There it is. Oh, sorry. If there you, you go. Uh, you know, if you by by me putting my finger on the on the and touching the back, it signs in. Yeah. And and I, you know, technologically. That's maybe not as advanced as a Windows Hello type thing, but practically, it's kind of a, a better approach. It works better, and you know these are the kinds of problems I think that Microsoft has uh, with the Lumia 950 in particular, but you know maybe with Windows Phone in general. So the thing I would just say about the future is that you know I, I think Windows 10 is going to be a big deal within the confines of what it is. Um, I think that a billion users at some point, in the, you know, years down the road is absolutely possible. I think most of them are going to be on. Uh, non-phone devices, I guess, would be the way I would say it. But, you know, whatever. Let's say there'll be a billion of them at some point. Um, next year can go in different ways. I mean, we uh, we know, and, and I mean, it is an absolute fact that Microsoft is working on something that is a Surface phone. Now, whether that phone comes out or whether there are multiple models and whether it means it's going to be Intel instead of uh, Qualcomm-based or ARM-based, you know, that's speculation. Or, or, and that's one of those things we'll have to wait and see. But that's something, you know, in the same way that we were looking forward to the 950, 950XL for months, and we have this thing to kind of look ahead to, the next thing we can look ahead to uh, is this Surface phone. And, and maybe people will hold out hope for that, and I would caution you against yeah. that kind of thing. But, so okay. let, me, let me speculate a little bit on this, on the Surface phone. Yeah. Uh, we know that something will be coming. Um, well, we know that they're working on it. Now, yeah. it, it doesn't mean something is coming because, you know, plans change. I, I, just to interject real quick, I, I suppose – the negative thing that could happen is now it's next July and Microsoft has worked up one or more Surface Phone models and the senior leadership team gets together and they're looking at the stuff to determine what they're going to release in the fall. And maybe by this point we're talking about like a Surface Pro 5, a Surface Book 2, Surface Phone and they're kind of looking at it and they could pull a Surface Mini and say, you know what? Maybe it's time we give up on this kind of thing. You know? So is is um, the Lumia line, what are they doing with that department, you know, with, with all the people working on the Lumias? Is that going to be bye-bye? Well, it's still or? there. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's not called, the you know, it's not like the Lumia It's not the Lumia, team, yeah. Right? It's, Microsoft has a Windows Phone hardware team internally, and so they, they're they part of Surface now. Uh, and they're under the same person. Panos Binet runs both teams. Actually, Panos Binet runs all of their hardware. Um, kind of the new Stephen A. Lop, I guess, in a sense. You know, uh, they'll look, those guys perform magic. Um, they've done some really neat things with Surface devices. 
it is possible that they'll come up with a design that's unique enough that they think, okay, let's give this another year and see how it goes kind of thing. We'll see. But there's a part of me that worries about what happened this past year happening again, which is that they, you know, it's the end of the fiscal year. They're looking at everything and they say, you know what? This thing is a sinkhole. It doesn't make sense. It seems that Sasha Nadella is much more reliant on uh, profits and losses and that determining how things get to succeed. And that he may point to this thing and say, we need to stop doing this. We're just throwing money away here. It doesn't make any sense. And so that's one of the other outcomes. And so I, I, I think for right now, we have some decent devices, finally, it's in, in first time in over a year, about a year and a half, really. Um, they have certainly not met everyone's expectations. I mean, there's no way around that. I, the, the, the negativity around these devices is sort of amazing to me because I think they're actually pretty nice. Right, the 950 and 950XL. Um, yeah, for what they are, you know, yeah. given the, you know, the context of what they are. Um, but, you know, at some point, uh, you know, the Surface One's going to have to be awesome, uh, I think, for it to even make sense. It's yeah, it, it, that, that one has to be a, a no-brainer uh, flagship yeah. phone when you look at this. But... I. You know what yeah. do you do? What what can they do more than they're doing with their current 950s? I mean, it's not it's not going to be a major major overhaul over what they're currently doing on their 950 and 950 XL. It's going to be the small things that really take it to that level. Yes, uh, and of course those small things don't meet the fundamental problems for the platform. Although I I point out that you know for a device like a, a Surface Pro 4 or a Surface Book, the only reason those devices are viable is because we have 20 plus years of PC stuff to build up on and that the desktop PC market exists, you know, yeah. that you can run full blown office on these things. You can run Photoshop on these things. You can run, um, iTunes and Chrome and whatever. Um, there is a modern app platform, a universal app platform on windows 10. I, I don't think that matters to almost anybody. And the problem for windows phone is that's the only app platform, right? And so it's possible that they could turn, uh, the windows, the surface phone rather into a kind of a hybrid PC type thing. Uh, and that gives it kind of enough of a niche that it could exist. It could, it could replace the Surface Mini, in a sense, by being, especially the phablet version or versions of this thing, if that happens, where it, you know, it works with a pen. It has yeah. that kind of a Surface build, build, build quality materials, you know, uh, the same um, kind of look and feel as a Surface. It's essentially a tiny PC continuum dock. It is a PC. It can run PC Listen, apps. I, I think the smart bet for them will be uh, launch this with an Intel chip. You know, put an Intel chip on there. And this is great for Intel. It's incentive for Intel to kind of get their act together and get in the mobile market realistically. You know, in the, yeah. in the phone market realistically, get into that market. And it may be a major game changer if it's running Intel and you're able to run PC games once you, you know, PC applica applications once you dock it. Yeah, I mean, a lot has to happen for that to make sense. You know, um, the interesting thing, I, I don't really pay too much attention to this, but one of the interesting things that happened in the smartphone uh, world, um, I'd say over the past year, 15 months, is that, um, you know, Qualcomm really kind of dropped the ball on 60-bit, 4-bit processors, right? I think it was yeah. the 810, the Model 810, uh, re really ran hot. A lot of phones, you know, they kind of burn your hand as you use it, um, that kind of thing. And these devices, like, I think the, um, sorry, I'm losing, I'm, I, I lose track of all these numbers, but the the Nexus 5X, the uh, Lumia 950, both have a, what I think is like an 808 processor. It's a 64-bit processor. It's a hexa-core processor. Phablets have an 8-core, 64-bit processor that's supposed to kind of um, make up for the sins of that last generation. Yeah. But even given what's going on with Qualcomm, you know, the Atom stuff that Intel doesn't uh, Intel has doesn't match what's going on on the Qualcomm side. You know, for thin and light for heat, uh, for power management, for battery life, that kind of thing. And so uh, it's it's possible that, you know, they'll come up with this thing that we've all been asking for, and it will be like a phone that gets four hours of battery life, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, isn't quite the same thing. You know? So you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I, aren't all phones just getting four hours of battery life, or is that just me with my Android? <laughs> it's just, it literally is just you. I, yeah. I, I'm, every, I'm saddened every time I see you. You walk around like a... <laughs> It's sort of like a smoker with one of those uh, paper things or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah you, it's like you can't put it down. You know? I, I mean, it's it's horrendous, actually. Like right now, this phone was at 86% about an hour and a half ago. I enter my yeah. house, I'm at 50% right now. It's just, I mean, I, 
This is just yeah. my life with these phones. Uh, and you know what? Let me tell you. you it's no better on an iPhone in my house. It just runs out. But if I'm commuting and I'm doing a little bit of usage, phone usage, forget it. it it's shooting every minute. It's Every five minutes, it's going down 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%. I should but, ask my daughter a question. I don't know if she can. By the time so I'm daughter, going, it's over. Um, yeah, I, I don't see. Hey, Kelly. So my daughter just changed from a Windows phone to an iPhone. Smart move. It's, I'm going to ask her this question point blank and yeah. just see if she has any answer to this. So you just changed to an iPhone. Have you noticed using the iPhone whether the battery life is worse, better, or the same as your previous phone? It seems better. It seems better. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have a problem. You use this thing all day long. Mm -hmm. Do you have to ever have to plug it in while you're sitting around upstairs or whatever? Just goes all day. Now, can you repeat exactly what I say the same way I say it? <laughs> Andrew? Andrew? You are an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the first time I've been called that today. <laughs> so I don't know if you heard what she said. I did, um, yeah. She called you an idiot. She no, did call I mean, me an the, idiot. Um, well, no, I, and I hadn't asked her that question I was before. I was actually very interested about this uh, anyway. You know, so... Um, three, four days, five days, what it was, uh, she switched the uh, iPhone 6s. And um, this to the delight of her friends, you know, she can now Snapchat and uh, what she could, she could use it like, like a real teenager. Yes. You know what? That's the equivalent S of having a friend <laughs> that didn't have cable television growing up. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and it's funny because I honestly, I think for the most part, she's been very ambivalent about technology and what things she uses and, and she doesn't yeah. really care. But and she, it's funny because she uses a real hodgepodge of stuff, you know. Um, but she got the iPhone and, you know, I kind of set up a couple things for her. I, I put her on the fan. You know, we set up a little family so she can, you know, share the apps I've already purchased and all that stuff. And she couldn't care less. But I was curious about the battery life thing. And, again, I always think of you because I don't know what's going on with your phone. I don't know what you've got running in the background. I have nothing. Paul, I have nothing. It's just, first of all, what they did with the Samsung here. I have the S6. Uh, yeah. They made the battery smaller. On this, okay. So, but the, and it's sealed, right? This device is yeah, sealed. Yeah, it's sealed. Yeah, it's sealed. So I have just never seen anyone have such terrible battery life experience. It's um, horrible. I mean, it, it's it's really now it's gotten a little better from when I first got this phone, but it still makes no sense. So right now it was at fifty two percent, forty nine percent. I just yeah. dropped two percent in the last five minutes. I mean, it's I've insane. Had, I just got this phone, but you know, one of the things I did. In the same vein, because I get you to kind of just do these goofy things. I just left it on last. I just left it, you know, unplugged, and it was fine. I mean, you get up in the morning, I could probably go all day with it and never plug it in. Yeah, um, is that thing USB C? It is not USB C. Now, Cuban X Monkey brings up a good point in our chat room. Yeah, By the way, guys, if you're in our chat room, uh, you could change your nickname if you're watching live to whatever you want it to be and uh, join in. Uh, I do live in an area. My area has virtually no service. So, oh, that, so you, that's okay. So that's that a major. That's a major part. Okay. But when I'm in Manhattan, this, I, when I'm in Manhattan, and yeah. I'm sitting at a bar with you, and I have four bars, and I'm getting you know everything perfectly yeah, fine. Then it's fine. This thing should not be you know dropping two percent. It, it, I completely agree. Yeah, uh, it, it's a little well, bit way, more aggressive no, no, that, here. The but. fact that your phone is continually trying to find a good signal is probably almost certainly what's killing the battery. Sure, in my house. So you should consider yeah. just getting a a wireless extender for your house just to obviate this yeah. problem i mean that's um I, I i mean the only times i ever have battery life issues with my phones for the most part is if i'm you know if i like for example we we're just in europe and i'm on uh, a foreign you know foreign network and for some reason that seems to strain it if you're at, like using the at&t sim on like an orange or whatever it is in europe and uh and i have problems with particular apps on windows phone for example like the facebook app of windows phone is a joke and it just, it can't upload photos to save its life. And I'll make the mistake of like, I have four photos to upload to Facebook. I'm going to sit here on the table. I'm just going to let it go to town. And it sits there and it never actually uploads them. But it's like when you're driving like a mid 70s station wagon up a hill and you can actually see the gas like going down yeah. as you struggle up the hill. It, that's what the battery life is like on that thing. It's not the phone. It's it's some combination. Well, I guess it technically is the phone, but it's some combination of... um. Now let me let me just say this actually. Factors, I've yeah. kind of changed my tune on Android. Um 
I I used my wife's iPhone for an entire day. I needed the phone, and yeah. she was like, "Oh, just take mine." I, I, because I was having problems. She's with also mine. you're on Verizon. Right? I'm on Verizon, yeah, yeah, which is a whole and different she, story. So I took her, her I took her phone that day, and it was I felt crippled by really? by by the the confinement of iOS in a weird way. Uh, compared like, to Android, compared really. to Android, because with Android, like. I could I could have different. Obviously, you could do some of this too. But like in 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 Android, I could set a different text messaging app if I wanted to. I could set a different camera application as my default if I wanted to. You know, you have control on the back end a little bit with like checking these defaults for things. Um, you and then like the sharing aspect, you could do more with that. With iOS, it's a little bit different. Now, I I still highly recommend iOS to everybody. If you're looking to get a smartphone, there's nothing better than the iPhone, in my opinion, at this point, all around. You're going to find other things that do certain things better, but an overall package, the iPhone is your best bet. Um, But I did have some difficulty. I just felt it felt off for me. And I think part of it has to do with the fact that I've been using an Android phone for the last, you know, five, six years uh, as my everyday driver. But... I do think Android has gotten much, much better over the last two years. No, I do too. I do you know, too. When, when we were doing the show and every day I was cursing about how I hate Android, I don't have that feeling anymore of hatred. <laughs> it's working okay. on its, it's like, it's like a spouse working on its problems. Wow. You know, they're still a little crappy every now and then, but they're working on yeah. it. They're getting there. They're, they they're be, trying. Yeah, they, they are who they are. <laughs> yeah. Um, they are who know. they you are. Know, I, I, but I think there's a, there's a big change going on. You know that yeah. one of the things I really in smartphones. One of the things I really liked about Windows Phone and still like about Windows Phones is that that tile UI is so neat for just looking at the screen and uh, you know you don't always have to dive into apps because a lot of times when you pick up your phone you're looking for something whatever it might be the weather um, you know whatever it is and, and a lot of that stuff is in it. You're waiting for an email to come in. You know um, on iOS or Android you get like a little number sign unless you catch the notification. You can't really tell what the email is. And yeah. So on Windows Phone, you can. It's it's a nice feature. But I, I think for the past few years that people who use iOS and Android would tell you that, uh, or, or maybe wouldn't even tell you that. They may not even think of it this way. But the UI, the user experience of those devices is really the apps that they use. And, yeah. of course, that is where they went out you know, big time. Um, but I think the, uh, the big change that's coming is in these new UIs, these new experiences that they're building like Google Now on Tap. And they have that kind of proactive version of Siri, and you know you see some of that with Cortana, Windows Phone as well. And I think that's where Android really wins out because the stuff they're doing in Google now on Android is amazing. You I know, mean, I amazing. I was one of these people that said, "Who wants to speak to their phone? Who wants to do that?" Yeah. Uh, I do it every single day. I talk to Google now every single day. <laughs> Sometimes it even talks back. Sometimes it talks back. Yeah, like I had to I had to put something in my calendar. I just had a doctor's appointment yesterday, and I had to put it in the calendar that she had another one that I had to take her to in like two weeks. So as I'm at the office, I I go to Google Now, I click on it, and I just tell it the date, set a reminder for a doctor's appointment on the twelfth, and boom, all set, all done. It, it's it, it's interesting. It's, it, it's it was a slow change for me, but I think this is the case with a lot of people. You know, I spoke to someone that was using Cortana on their desktop. And this is someone yeah. that is not in the tech world. I mean, she she's she plays games and stuff, but she's not really engulfed in, in, in it as much as we are. And she wrote this thing on Facebook. She goes, oh, my God, I absolutely love Cortana. I, I use this thing all the time. And, wow. we, and we were talking about... On the about, desktop. Yeah, on the desktop. And, I, and we had this discussion like, who's going to really use it on the desktop? People are. <laughs> By the way, um, uh, this is semi-related, but I was just thinking, I just did this the other night. I don't, uh, did you get a new Apple TV? I have not gotten a new Apple yeah. TV yet. So um, I need this is like the type of thing I always keep. I always mean to write this kind of thing up. I, I think of it as like a twenty eight days later kind of thing. But um, you know, the more you use things, the more things change, and and things that you know you kind of glossed over before start to become more annoying. And I I think with the Apple TV, the new Apple TV, that the the vision of this thing is still some future thing, and that the reality of it today is that it's just a very minor update to what came before. But the worst part about it is that little touch part of the top of the interface. And okay. when, God help you if you ever have to type anything in with that thing because you overshoot the letters all the time. And it's really hard to navigate inside of videos, um, you know, to scrub through it and find the exact point you're trying to get to. It's just it's too sensitive and it's too – it's just not a good interface for TV, you know. And it kind of ruins the whole experience. Well, that and the fact that there are no apps that are useful at all. Um, but, the, but the side effect of that is – like with Amazon Fire TV, you can hold down on the microphone button. You can talk to it. In this case, you're talking to Siri. And actually, that works really well. And and I normally don't like talking to the TV or to uh, 
to any electronics really other than to swear at them when they don't work. But because the touch control on the remote is so shitty, I actually do like talking to Siri on the Apple TV. Um, I would I would have loved it if Siri was, was self-aware. Point, I would love for Siri to be self-aware of who's using it. And yeah. they're like, hey, Siri, uh, put on, uh, you know, this. And you go, sorry, Paul, I'm just an oversized iPad, iPhone. I can't do that for you, <laughs> suck, Paul. Suck it, Therat. Yeah. Suck You're going to watch an Apple keynote event first. <laughs> that, would, that would be so amazing. Uh, by the yeah. way, we are on the Apple TV. If, if you guys we have are. a new Apple TV, we have an app there. You can watch us live right now on the Apple TV. What just is the app called? GFK Network. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Uh, I heard that you know Amazon is coming soon. Um, that will be big, but you know I I still feel like if they just if they got Google Play on there, okay, and they got Microsoft stuff, which would be amazing. All of a sudden, you would have this one device that does everything, and then I would put up the remote. I'd be happy to use that thing. But as of today, like it's, you know, it's just not. It's very Apple centric. It is. You know? It's it's still Apple centric. I mean, they're adding a bunch yeah. of apps, and that was a problem with Amazon. Um, with Amazon I Fire, back and it's garbage. Listen, I absolutely love the Amazon Fire, but the problem that I had with it was the lack of applications and the lack of an app store. They they still don't have an app store. It's it's pretty convoluted how you search for apps on there. Um, they have like a top ten, and it's like really all over the place. They they need to do a better job at that, and I think they are in the coming years, but. Uh, they do not have a lot of applications. Over the last, I want to say, six months, they've been aggressively pushing out yeah. applications for this okay. thing. Yeah. And that's great, but it doesn't help with the initial you know, uh, experience that I've had with it. With that said, that's what I use in my, in my bedroom because it's the fastest device that I have, and I, I actually have gotten really used to the device. So I don't plan on switching from it. And now I'm already engulfed in the in the Amazon Prime experience where I've purchased a whole ton of stuff. And yep. I really don't think I want to leave and go to, you know, Apple now. Yeah, this that's a tough one because I've got so much. I've got stuff in every ecosystem. And you get into a goofy thing where you're like, I know I bought this movie. Where is it? <laughs> you know, yeah. and it would be kind of nice if uh, you had one there. device that had access to all your services and then, you know, voice or typing, whatever, you could search for the thing and just play it. And who cares where it is? I'm still amazed that certain things are not on. I, b- I bought this indie documentary the other day. Yeah. Um, and the only place I could Which get it, it. I don't want. Uh, oh, well, it was about, you know what? It was actually interesting. It was about cam girls and their life. Okay. And and like what Cam, led? The, yeah, I forgot the name of the documentary. John Suncast would know it. Um, I interviewed like a like a cam model a couple years ago, yeah. and um, she she was in the movie, so she sent me. She's like, hey, you know, this is the movie I'm in. If you want to talk about it, it's like months ago, and I never did it. And just like, oh, we should watch that movie. It's actually interesting, and it's about their lives as like cam models. Yeah, and it's like really bizarre. It was actually done pretty de- well. Uh, I mean, it was a pretty decent documentary. But the only place that you could get it was on Vimeo. Vimeo. So sure. I had to I had to sure. download the Vimeo app, find it, give Vimeo my credit card information, purchase it on Vimeo, and I was like, this is so convoluted. Like, why wouldn't this be on Amazon? That's funny. And it was like a well done documentary. It wasn't like a rinky dink, you know, some yeah. guy is making this. It was actually done. Or it was done really well. Uh. No, I don't know if that was the name, John. I, I got I to gotta check the name. So, I don't know. It's still all over the place. Uh, something else I wanted to talk to you about, since we're on the um, you know the PC conversation here. Uh, how do you like that kangaroo PC? So Now, you have uh, a review on therot.com yeah, about it. Yeah. I, the, the funny thing about it is, uh, before I went on a trip, Trip. And I think it was not the Europe trip. It might have been Las Vegas. It was some time ago. Uh, this thing was announced, the Kangaroo PC. It's like a $99 computer. Um, it looks like a deck of cards. It has a dock that has expandability on it. But it's $99. And I'm thinking, you know, HP Stream 11 class hardware, but without the screen, keyboard, and mouse. Interesting. I, so I kind of knee-jerked, just bought it. And uh, I never really got around to writing it up. And then last week when I was kind of laid low a little bit, um, and you know, I was I'm going through my office here. I, I, I said, oh, I gotta, I gotta get going on this, this thing. And I really wasn't expecting much from it. I, I thought I was gonna say, like, you know, what are you expecting you to get for yeah. nine bucks? You know, and you know, on the face of things, it is um, exactly what it sounds like. It's an, it's a ninety nine dollar computer. It's an Atom based two gigs of RAM, uh, thirty two gigs of storage, which is eMMC, 
Um, it has a little dock. Yeah, you can plug in uh, H, um, HDMI out, you know, full size. USB 2, USB 3, and power. It has micro SD on the side of the device for expansion if you want that. And um, that dock does come with it. 99 bucks. And like, okay, I mean, that that right there for certain people, you want a, a computer out in the living room, yeah. you know, whatever. I, I still sort of feel for the, the typical, you know, home computing scenarios that a little laptop makes a lot of sense. You get a, an HP Stream 11 for, you know, under 200 bucks. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. But here's the thing. It has a couple of features that are really cool that are just kind of crazy and don't even need to be on it. Um, one of them is it has a fingerprint reader and it's Windows. <laughs> Does it really? So, yes. And so actually that's really cool because you can sign in with having, without having to type a password. So you can just press and you press your finger on it. It's not like a swipe. You just press it on and it logs you into it. And wonderful. Really, really nice. Um, completely unnecessary. The other thing they have is some software and uh, the software runs on an iPod or I'm sorry. Well, I guess it would run on an iPod, but really an iPad. Um, I tested it on an iPad mini, but it obviously works on a full-size iPad. And then you run the software, the server software on the computer itself. And the iPad becomes the screen for the device, becomes a touch screen for okay. the device. And because it's, you can move the pointer around, right? You use it as a mouse. And of course, you can use the virtual keyboard and you can type with it. And so this, I mean, the only issue is it has to be connected with the cable. So you have to have the, uh, you know, the lighting cable. But um, this is kind of like that final step sort of thing where, you know, for whatever reason you might. And, oh, and I'm sorry. I should add the third thing it has. It's crazy, is it has a battery, and so you could unplug it from the power and use it for I think up to four hours. I've not nothing, the nothing crazy. Light. Yeah, but the thing that's interesting about that is two things. One, you could use it around. That means you could use it around the house, and you you could buy another dock for forty dollars or thirty dollars, whatever the price is. You could have a dock upstairs on your, you know, keyboard, mouse, whatever setup. You could have a dock at work, you know, and you could just bring the thing around and you could bring it from home, bring it to work. It's sort of, it's a little portable computer. Um, it also means that if you're out on the go and maybe you just normally have your iPhone with you in this case, or maybe an iPad, you bring an iPad, whatever it is, and some work related thing happens and it, there's something that you have to do to a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet or some work related thing, whatever that requires PC software, plug in your iPod, your iPad, your iPhone, whatever. And you have a real computer there, and you can use it for like four hours and yeah. get work done on it. And I, I that is, I, I don't personally need it. Um, and like I said, I still think for like a lot of people, you know, normal people with kids and things, you know, a little stream laptop makes a lot more sense. But it's just, it's so unique and innovative in its own way. It's just, it's, it's ninety nine dollars. I mean, so um, it, when, it's an, you, it's the Atom processor, one point forty four gigahertz Atom yeah. proce uh, X X five processor, yeah, two yeah, gigs yeah, of RAM, yeah. Windows ten, yeah. Intel HD graphics. So if you compare this to the Compute Stick, the Intel Compute Stick, is it? That's better what I was going to say. It's better. Yeah, it's a lot better. And the reason it's a lot better is because you know a Compute Stick is something you're going to you either going to leave on a TV and use it for some reason as like a overpowered Roku kind of thing. Or you're going to stick it in a bag and bring it with you when you go to like a hotel or something. In which case, you're still going to be fussing around with all kinds of stuff. I, the thing that's better about this, yeah, it's a little bigger, but you have that expansion capability. Very easy to plug in standard parts to use. I mean, that's Bluetooth, of course. You can do that kind of stuff as well. But if for some reason you need to, you could just plug in like a, a two terabyte hard drive to it very easily. I know the computer stick has, you know, one USB port on it. Yeah, whatever, but this but, one has, has um, multiple. Uh, um, yeah. You know, the con is it's not just, as small, but... You know but what I'm wondering? It's so, battery powered. If the thing ever becomes unplugged, it's no problem. You know, the compute stick falls out. You know, the plug falls out. It's over. Um, I just think it's, I think it's a lot more versatile. And I think we get a little too hung up on smallness, thinness, whatever. Where this thing, and this thing is not. It's not big. It's really, uh, it's the size of a phablet phone. It's just a little thicker. Uh, it's not a big device. So here's a question for you, Paul. Um, as far as watching, let's say I want to use this as my media center device. You yeah. know. Um, how capable is it of running, you know, 1080p video streaming content? Oh, it, perfectly well. That's perfectly no problem. fine. Yeah. I wonder how yeah. this would do with like a Skype machine, you know? Yeah, that's an interesting, yeah. I, you, I, did you try it with Skype? No, I, I, you know, obviously for the podcasts, you know, I try to use the most powerful computer I have at home. It's always going to be an i7 Surface Book that I've been using lately. It's obviously an i7 as yeah. well. Um, i5 is fine. This thing is, um, it would probably work. I mean, I, you, you. I would love to try it out with you one day. You'd have to connect a. You'd have to bring a camera. You know, you now you, you're talking about. You have to have a camera of some yeah. kind, kind of thing. 
Um, I'm not really sure. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah, two like scenarios. Kind of just walk around with it and use it as a... Yeah, so like maybe you need like a little Skype machine, camera. you know? You, you know what you could technically do? <laughs> this right. thing is crazy if it works well. Like if you're doing like an on-the-go thing, connect the webcam to it, mount it to like a selfie stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. have like one of those forge, you know, connected. Does it have, it uh -huh. has Wi-Fi, right? Yep. Okay, so it'll go off your, your hotspot on your phone mm -hmm. via Wi-Fi, and now you're on the go. Like, yeah. you know, I think something like that yeah. is pretty cool. I'd like to try that out with you to see how capable this thing is. Because right now, what okay. we're doing for the Skype machines, we're using yeah. these like... Old, you know they're kind of a couple of years old. They're these AMD quad core machines, like gateways and right. HPs. Right, right, and right. these things are are big. They're loud. They get hot. My, my server room's on like on fire. It, it's tremendously warm in my basement. I never have to turn the heat on because these computers are heating the place up. How great would it be if I could just replace these machines with something like this? Yeah. You know, it's a different it's a different time we're in. They, it, software requires a lot less work. The other thing I was thinking. This would be a phenomenal media center device. Potentially. I, I think the, the one thing I would say is, you know, this thing, can, it connects the TV. So you, you're going to have like a HDMI cable involved here. You don't want to run it across the room. I mean, ideally what this thing is doing is sitting under your uh, TV somewhere. Yeah, put it, put so it in the cabinet and you're good. Yeah. Well, I mean, but ideally what you would have is some kind of remote control and then whatever software you're using where it would work. Correctly, I mean the way it is now. What you'd probably want to do is have a, a Bluetooth mouse, and you know it, it would work. I mean, you you need a surface you could move the mouse around on, and you could interact on up on the screen. But you know the, the the PC is still like the one thing you could run everything on, right? It could have Roku. I'm uh, not Roku. I'm sorry, Netflix on there, Hulu, iTunes, the Amazon software is available on the PC. I mean, everything is on the PC. Microsoft stuff is on the PC, right? The uh, Groove and the Movie and TV app, it's all there, and. It's kind of cool. I mean, like it, it's you know, it's it's a little using a mouse instead of a remote control from your living, you know, the couch in the living room is not necessarily ideal. Yeah. But for people who prefer to do things that way, um, yeah, why not? I mean, it's got a USB three port on it. You can throw a huge hard drive on there if you want. Um, it would work. Yeah. I'm gonna contact these guys to see if they're gonna say, if they would send me a review unit because I would love to talk about this on the yeah, air. See how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah to yeah. see how it works with Skype because this may be a very good option for podcasters. You know, not heavy duty, high quality production, uh, but people that are just doing Skype calls and need multiple lines. A hundred bucks for a PC, uh, not a bad idea. Right, right. I think it's pretty cool. Um, I was really interested when I saw it on your website. I was really interested. Uh, Something else this week that I saw that was fascinating was that Amazon Prime drone video. Did you see that? Yeah. The Prime Air with Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> I didn't Clarkson. watch it, but I, yeah. I'm oh, it's actually, it. you got to watch the video. It's actually done really well because Jeremy Clarkson's in it and him explaining anything is phenomenal. Oh, does he punch anyone in the face? <laughs> no, but he's so <laughs> condescending. It's, it's phenomenal. Sure. sure. Uh, so he, he does this video and they're showing how this thing is working. And something that I picked up from the video that they hadn't discussed so do you know how it knows where to land mm. so you put like a little pad outside nice like with the amazon logo so what they did <laughs> yep. like okay find a clear area like in your backyard and put this thing down there and it'll calculate like it'll know like okay that's where i'm going so i wonder if it like pings it or just looking for like right. an amazon thing but it flies like five six hundred feet in the air sure. so it's clearing you know power lines and everything um and I can't it only, wait to shoot one of these things out of the oh sky. Oh, man, I can't wait to see these things buzzing around. I, I, I actually, last year when, when we discussed this, I thought this was not going to happen for the next 10 years. This thing is very realistically yeah. going to happen. Uh, the only problem is right now it only goes up to 15 miles. So think of it has to go back and forth. So you got about seven miles back and forth yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, of it traveling. But you got like 30 minutes it's service. It's like battery life on phones. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. Um, yeah. I wonder what this does to UPS. Yeah, you know, because now, now they're going after UPS and FedEx. I, I wonder how this impacts their business. I mean, everyone, assuming the zones are, uh, hello, so drones are kind of a viable delivery method, which I'm actually not 100% you know, <laughs> convinced of. Um, they'll have to get into this game because obviously... The ability to get around traffic and stuff is what kind of makes it happen. I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if it was a, you know, you you, you have uh, packages that are you know have to be delivered by a certain time on a certain day. The truck knows, you know, by driving around where it is on its delivery yeah. schedule. You know, they could potentially just send drones from the road 
to deliver certain packages that wouldn't otherwise make it kind of thing. It could be like a last ditch effort to get it out the holidays or whatever. Well, you know, I have here in New York, um, we have, they just expanded, they had it in Manhattan for a while, but they just expanded it to the outer boroughs uh, Mm -hmm. in the suburbs. And now we have Amazon same day delivery. So I, I've been playing around with this to see how close I could get it to, like, what's yeah. the shortest time frame I could get it. If right. I could order something at 1 p.m. and it'll be at my house by 5.30. So about four and a half, five yeah. hours, I think that's pretty I mean, good. Is, you know, so I just had this conversation with my wife. I, you know, there, there is no doubt, there is no doubt that uh, even without ne- same-day delivery, if you just kind of look, the ability to, to you know, I, I use the example in the kitchen, we have a, like a Chromecast kind of thing sitting on a radio. And I was like, imagine we needed a cable for that thing, right? I could go to Amazon right now, find the exact cable. It could be here tomorrow, you know, free shipping because we have Prime. Amazing. It's an amazing capability. And back in the day, not that there were Chromecasts back in the day, but if you needed something like that, you would go, you would get in the car and you would drive to a local Best Buy if there was one. If you go back further in time, maybe you would drive to, in this area, like a Leechmares type store, a Radio Shack, you know, whatever, like local electronics thing. You'd have to deal with people. You'd have to deal with crowds. You'd have to deal with traffic. You know all this kind of stuff. There's no doubt that this is an advantage. It's a huge improvement. But there is also something that's lost, isn't there? You know, like yeah. the fact that like we get so lazy about this stuff. Like the the notion of leaving the house becomes like a huge inconvenience. Like, oh know? man, I don't want to go down. Like, uh, I, actually, I don't want to. You know, Radio Shack going out of business was horrible because I yeah I, I never realized how how important they were. Until they were gone, right? Like, everyone's like, ah, who needs a Radio Shack? Do you know how many times I had to get something last minute? Like, a last minute thing. The last, I I just, you know, last year I got this new TV. I had to make a trip out to Radio Shack twice because I needed one. I needed an optical cable. And I didn't have one. And I wanted to set up the sound bar now. I didn't want to wait a day. So I went to Radio Shack and got an optical cable. Um, I had to get batteries. I, you know, it was 6.30 at night and I needed to go get batteries. I just drove to Radio Shack because it was right around the corner from me and got batteries. This, Obviously, yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, bookstores are like this. Uh, not that you ever have like an emergency book need, but I mean, the ability to go out and get something right then is often kind of cool. Um, you, years you, ago when I, I'm sorry. No, you, you, uh, that's exactly my point. Uh, when last minute purchases, you know, yeah. that you need. Or just, it, not even, last minute is a tough term, but it's just like, you know, imagine I was building this desk and there was one screw missing. You know? Yeah. Where do you go? I mean, the ability to go somewhere into a hardware store in Dedham or whatever and, and just pick up the exact screw is kind of amazing. But when those things all get knocked out of business, um, you know, the ability to get that exact screw from Amazon tomorrow is awesome. Yeah. But, you know, it's not always exactly what you want. Um, and it's not, you know, it, it and that uh, wonderful benefit of having that ability has also taken its toll, you know, on other things. Yeah, um, it, it's it's fascinating how it's changed. But I mean, this is why we're able to do Amazon same day purchases. I needed a BNC connector, Paul. I needed like a BNC yeah, to yeah, BNC yeah. female to me. It's always female something extender. like that. It's very, Who very needs specific. that? Yeah, like where yeah. am I going to get that? You know what? Radio Shack carried it. Radio, I was going to say there was a plastic bin in Radio Shack that had a bunch of those things in it. You know, right next to realistic cassette tapes and old Tandy <laughs> parts. But um, yeah, I, that. that I, Sure. I mean, when you when those things go away, you miss them. There's no doubt about yeah. it. Fascinating. So, Paul, uh, let's talk about uh, the PC study next week. What are you oh, doing? Yeah. So um, next Friday and Saturday at the Dedham Hilton, which is right down the street from my house here, um, I'm doing a, uh, a study. Uh, I can't really give you too many details because the, the, there'll be a reveal for people to go to it. And I can, I'll talk about it afterwards. But Basically, what people are going to be doing is comparing two computers side by side. Uh, it's about forty minutes uh, long, um, but we're going to have prizes. You know, people can win an Xbox One. I think it's the Halo Edition one. There's an, a Dell XPS thirteen laptop, and uh, we're going to use some big uh, displays during the study, and we're going to give those away at the end as well. Um, we're looking for um, a diverse uh, kind of set of people. I don't want all like kind of nerdy guys like me, but you know, men of any, women of any age, children age 16 plus, non-technical, technical, whatever. We're looking for, you know, a mix. And, um, you know, there are available time slots. And so each day it's from nine to six. And it's, like, it's you know, with our slots, but it's really 40 minutes of study, um, you know, starting at 9 a.m. And so if you're in the Boston area and would like to participate, I'm actually probably going to give away, uh, I, I should say, I probably, I will give away, not that this will be fun for everybody, but 
Um, I'll give away the, uh, the Windows 10 book that I just wrote to everybody who participates as well. But if you're interested in participating, uh, please contact me via email so we can get you scheduled, you know, over those two or whatever slot you want over those two days. And I'll send you the information. But uh, my email is my first name at my last name. So Paul at Thurot.com, uh, T-H-U-R-R-O-T-T. Excellent. Very exciting yeah. stuff. I'm excited about that. Yeah. I wish I could good. join. I wish I could I hang out you there. You should come up. You should come up for it. Yeah, when is it? Next week? Uh, Friday and Saturday. Next Friday and Saturday. Yeah, not this Friday. And Saturday, following Friday. Week, Friday yeah. You know what? That's not, that actually sounds like a really nice weekend trip. Let me see. What's I mean, the date? The Denham Hilton is almost walkable from my house. So what is that? The 11th and the 12th? Yep. Oh, uh, that's not... You know what? Let me talk to Joss. Yeah. I would actually... Up. Yeah, that would be a fun little trip out there. Everybody can touch my hair and touch my eyebrows and see <laughs> see that I'm a real boy. I'm sure. a real boy, damn it. Um, so also, <laughs> yep. you're building a new PC, which we're going to be talking over the next couple of weeks about this because this, I yeah. love building new PCs. I mean, that's, that's seriously one of the things that I absolutely love doing. Some people find it really horrible. I haven't horrible. done this in a while. You know? I love doing it. I know you, it. Just, you, just, you were just doing this. Yeah, I, and, I, do, uh, I do it once a year. Oh. I mean, I... I um, I was talking about doing this early in the year, and I got, I've gotten sidetracked by just all the stuff that's been going on. But for the past month or so, month, maybe more than a month, I've been using the Surface Book here at home and on the road. I turned off my desktop computer, which is probably three and a half. It's probably going to be four years old this spring, but it's an i7. It's very high end and uh, is, would probably work fine for years to come. But with the stuff that happened with Surface Book, I thought, you know, Maybe I need to go back to my original plan here, which is to build my, you know, build my own computer uh, for the home, and so I'll replace my desktop computer, um, you know, with whatever the, uh, you know, modern gen, the latest I7, and the greatest, sixteen gigs, you know, yeah. of RAM, and you know, on and on and on. But, I'm going to tell you right now, um, you are not going to notice a tremendous difference. Uh, it's well, uh, here's the difference I'm hoping to notice. What are you hoping because to notice? Honestly, it's not day to day performance because, like I said, I think. For the types of productivity things that I do on a computer, what I have now is fine. Um, what I would like is something that's quiet. Okay, your your thing is really loud. So you're going to go liquid cooling. Yeah, I mean that's what one of the things I want to talk about. Yeah, yeah. I, I would imagine that would be the case. But yeah. Coincidentally, that's, that's my friend John just bought a new computer. He bought a Dell. He had a a very a very crazy for the day high end Dell computer that he had nothing but problems with. Um, so naturally, he bought another Dell. But this time, what he did was he bought kind of a mid-level model. It was just an i5. It does have eight gigs of RAM. It's you know it had like a terabyte hard drive in it. You know, for him, it's everything that he needs. And um, I came over just to kind of help him with it last night. And as it turned out, he really didn't need my help at all. It was very easy to set up. But the one thing that really struck me about this computer was how quiet it was. <laughs> I was like, I really need that. And of course, with this new desk setup that I'm kind of working on it for now, at least I have. The computer is up on the desk because, you know, when you think about a standing desk, it's going to go up and yeah. down. And I guess I could mount it under the desk and maybe I will. Do yeah, that, I got to show you. I got to show you the case I got. My, the case, I, I didn't go with like a full size tower. I always go with like yeah. a full tower and they're like ridiculously big and you don't need it. I got like this thing is like a box. I'm thinking about like a shuttle type box. Yeah. Almost, so you know? mine is almost like that, but a little bigger. Um, yeah. Is it yeah. squarish or is it it's more of a square? Tower? No, no, no. It's squarish, but it's not like squarish to the point with like a handle I can walk around with. It's not like small like that. It's still big, yeah. but it did clear up some space here. But it is super quiet. This parts that I put in this thing, I have you know the latest. I actually went with a Haswell E chip uh, Intel processor instead of going with the latest one because these right. are faster. These are actually better. The Haswell E's are better than the current um, whatever it was, whatever the current one is. Skylake. Uh, Skylake. Yeah, Skylake E is coming out next year, and I couldn't wait till next year. But uh, okay. I put, you know, I did liquid cooling on this thing. I made sure that the fans are quiet. I upgraded everything, on, you know, as far as like the stock case fans go. Right. Um, I spent about a grand, a little over yeah. a grand. And yep. it, the thing is phenomenal. It's a great machine. No problems. I, what I want to do is, I, you know, I, I mean, I will get a nice, I'll probably just get Skylake, whatever. I, I, honestly, the. You'll be fine with Skylake. Yeah, I think I'll be fine with it. But the, the the things that I care about, like for example, I don't want, I don't think I need at all any kind of a video card of any shape or size or whatever. I'm not going to ever play well, games. Paul, they're so inexpensive now. You might I know, as well. but it's another thing with a potential fan on it and more power draw and whatever. What what I'm really interested in doing is the, 
you know, the M2, I think it's called M2 style SSD, like the, yeah, um, the super you know, fast like SSDs, little, yeah, the PCIe, you know, little card, yeah, kind of thing. Um, now those things are I, I, unbelievably fast. I mean, it's it's ridiculous yeah. how fast those things are. You I'd have to like get a motherboard to, that supports it. Right, that's a, right, and this yeah. is a big. This is what I mean. I'm I'm sort of starting this con- the, the thinking and conversation around this because I'd like to have no fixed disk in it. Like I just want SSD. Um, I, if I could get away seriously, I, I, if it made sense and I could do it, I would not even get a video card. Just use whatever the graphics were. It's almost like it's almost like laptop componentry, really. Just high end laptop componentry. Yes. Yeah. No, I got it. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I, I I gotta figure this out. I'm not I'm not. This is something I I touched on earlier in the year. I kind of thought about it. I got a bunch of feedback from people. I got some good advice for the time, but of course the processor gen has shifted. The 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 storage stuff in particular has changed, and storage you know it, it gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and better and better and better. Um, so I want to just yeah. kind of modernize all well, that I, stuff. I'm going to tell you something um, to kind of I uh, lure you into actually getting a a, a real video card. Uh, the new the new video <laughs> okay. cards now the the fan yep. doesn't run constantly. The way that they work is because they're they're able to cool much better. So mm-hmm. it's running constantly at like twenty percent efficiency uh, as far as the nice. fans go. So the fans are either spinning very low or they're not even spinning at all. They only work when they're needed. Uh, I kind of didn't like that. Uh, because I do some heavy duty video stuff, and uh, I was using an AMD. Yeah. I was using the uh, the AMD uh, three eighty, the R nine three eighty, and mm-hmm. I noticed that the fan is not spinning. And I was okay. like, "Wow, that that's." And no matter how much I would use it, you know, I could do full, you know, benchmarking, and it was still not spinning as fast as I would like it to. It ended up being that it's the drivers that they put out, uh, the uh, Crimson drivers, the new AMD drivers. They're not doing the catalyst anymore. They're doing crimson. And there was some problems with that. So I'm going to try, you know, using it again to see if that helps. But they've gotten so much better with the video cards. You don't even notice that the fans are spinning anymore. It's really. <laughs> I better it, I better not, Andrew, because you, I be, <laughs> I'm very sensitive to. Yeah. Um, so I have something I want to review here for everybody. I want to unbox and I just got it. It's that $34 Fire uh, tablet. From Amazon. I ordered nice. a bunch of these for the family. So I want to review this. I want to, you know, do like a little unboxing of it. But I want to see how I could do it. Should I do it for the post show and I'll release this for everybody afterwards? Okay. You know, everybody could watch it. Maybe I could do that. Right. It might be fun. We could put it online and do like a whole unboxing and Paul could ask me a whole bunch of questions. Because I'm really curious on how this is. I bought a whole bunch for the family, but I have no idea... If this is even a decent buy at thirty four dollars, now it's forty nine ninety nine. <laughs> but you never yeah. know. You know, you're thinking, well, it's Amazon. How bad could it be? Well, it could be horrible. Well, I, <laughs> it could be pretty bad. It actually. could be pretty bad. So you know what we'll do? We'll do that right after this. We'll do it on the post show. We'll talk about it. We'll do a whole unboxing, and I'll release that on YouTube and of course on the Patreon page. But it'll be open for everybody. Everybody could see it. Uh, we'll do that. That might that might be the best way to do this. What do you think, Paul? Yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, I, I, the thing is, you know, there's a bunch of things to look at. It's going to be the quality of the screen, right? It's probably pretty low res. Um, just the general performance. I, they've, I know they've changed the UI for this gen. I assume, no, I'm wrong. They have micro SD expansion, and that alone is very interesting. Um, so I, I think, you know, for the price, this is, I, I, I can't imagine it's actually that bad for the price, you know? I mean, how bad could it be for $34? Or how good could it be for $34? Yeah, we don't know. That's the thing. And that's it, the thing. So I if actually, something goes south, you give this to a kid and something goes south. Who cares? It was thirty four. Who cares? It was thirty four bucks. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we're gonna do that after this. We'll do it. Uh, I got to just move some cameras around because I did not remember that I was doing this. I put in the notes, but I had no idea that I was gonna do this today. So I'll just move <laughs> some cameras around and we'll do that in the post show. Sure. And maybe you know what we could do? We could also maybe add this to the other part. I don't know. We'll figure something out. Uh, we'll do it okay. that way. So Paul, yeah. what do you have coming up? Anything? I, huh? Um, anything new? Would he doing anything? What's going on? No, I'm just trying to survive at this point. I, <laughs> I'm sick for so long. I'm so tired. Um, no, I mean, I'm coming to New York soon, but that's not until, when is that? That's mid-month, isn't it? Like 16th. So um, we haven't really announced details about this yet, but in a little over two weeks, we're doing a live 
uh, Windows Weekly from the Microsoft Store. Yes, I will be producing it, it seems like. Yeah, and we need to uh, get together and kind of figure out... Uh, what we want to do is invite people to come, um, but I, I think there's going to be a limit on how many people can be there because of the size of the space. And so I'm not sure what our plans are yet to facilitate this. So I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want people just to show up quite yet. But I mean, I assume we'll be able to talk about that. So maybe next week uh, we'll have more information. Yeah. So I'm in this uh, the email. Uh, going yeah. back and forth. So I have to get in touch with Alex to see how it's going to work because I actually wanted to bring like the real cameras, like these cameras. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to probably drive down there and just bring to... like the equipment to the oh, store. Wow, yeah. And wow. then I'll just bring like, you know, uh, the microphone and then uh, Chris will bring his mixer like he did last time and then we'll set up like nice. the camera. So it's like a real camera. It doesn't, you know, I, I, yeah, I thought I'd make it special. Might as well do something special for Paul. That's my <laughs> gift for you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of looking forward. I've never seen the store yet. So I've, I've, uh, in fact, on the last trip, I think I, I had pinged both you and Mary Jo. And I was like, hey, I'm over on the other side of town. I'm heading to Rattle and Hum. Does this make sense for me to go to the Microsoft store? Uh, and Mary Jo was like, no, 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 no. Wait, wait until you, you know, you'll see it when you come out for the next thing. So this will be the first time. Very, very yeah, cool. Yeah. It'll be very cool. I haven't been there either, so it'll be my first time too. We could hold hands. <laughs> we will, I'll, it'll, be I'll need it. it'll be wonderful. Uh, go to our website, gfqnetwork.com. Guys, subscribe to the podcast. We're everywhere podcasts are available. <laughs> if you're using a Windows phone, search everything except for what the tech. Look up Andrew Zarian. Look up GFQ Network. Uh, I don't really? know if Paul is Perot this... works. Everything works except for what the tech. If you look for what the tech, there is nothing. Oh, that's not right. For some well, others. Okay, by the way, I have a better bit of advice. Okay. If you're using Windows Phone, uh, don't use the built-in podcast app. Use Pocket Casts. Pocket Casts is amazing, yeah. And that will work, won't it? We uh, must be it on should. Pocket it should work. Yeah, just use Pocket Casts. Pocket Casts is a great app, and it syncs your subscriptions to the cloud. If you use an Android device, you can you know it goes back and forth. I don't know if it's on iOS. Maybe it is, but uh, I know it's on Windows Phone and Android, and it's awesome. Just use Pocket Cast. I think you have to buy it. It's not expensive. It's probably five dollars or something. But um, that's a great app. That solves the problem on Windows Phone nicely. I bet. Please subscribe. <laughs> I have a child on the way, guys. It helps. <laughs> sure. I got I got three weeks left. <laughs> subscribe, uh, yes. please. Uh, go to website gfknetwork.com. Of course, go to therot.com. Everything Paul Therot, everything he's doing there. Also, Paul does a phenomenal podcast called Windows Weekly with Mary Jo Foley and Leo Laporte. You can catch it live every Wednesday afternoon at 2 p.m. East on the Twit Network. Of course, on-demand programming also on therot.com. You can download it there. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarin. You can follow Paul at Therot. If you're watching this live, stay tuned. I'm going to do a um, an unboxing of this Fire tablet. And I'll give you an honest first impression. If it sucks, I'll tell you. If it's great, I'll tell you. Buy it for everybody in your family. Uh, <laughs> and, and that's it, guys. We'll see you all next week. Take care. <laughs>